Just Between Us, a spontaneous, intuitive, live television show with topics that are intended to inspire, delight, educate, and encourage. Focusing on the lives, experiences, and viewpoints of motherload women, the show features a rotating cast of four women of all ages and from all walks of life. Quick, upbeat, and fast-paced with a variety of topics, this one-hour show will be aired live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8.30 a.m. Tune in. It's just between us. Good morning. I'm uh, thrilled to say I'm hanging with my peeps. We're going to be rocking it today. <laughs> We've got a new peep today. So Christy's with us. Yeah. So good we morning, are going to have Christy. a great time. We've got some good topics. The Spitfire's back. The lovely Monique is back. So we're going to have a good time. Good morning. I'm Susie from Volcano. I'm Martha from my own. I'm used to being over there. I know. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Uh, Christy Conley from the Plymouth area. Monique from my own. Great. So, Christy, I'm going to have you give um, Monique two topics. Two please. topics. Mm -hmm. Here we go. And there Monique. you go, my dear. Okay. And I still get. Oh, this is this is good. <laughs> okay. What's the your topic? man is the topic. Mm -hmm. Did you know he was going to be the love of your life? Number one. Uh -huh. Ooh. Very okay. Good. Okay. And, and the second one. Uh, keeping up with the modern times is the subject. Number five. Number five. What does a modern look like to you? Hairdo, clothing, etc. Ooh, fashion, yay. Hey. That's good. wonderful. Well, mm -hmm. those two, we'll be off to a good start. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a very, very short break. We're going to come back and see what Christy's got to say. And Martha, what do you got to do, sneeze? <laughs> Go to commercial while she sneezes all over me. Just between us, a spontaneous, intuitive. And now back to Just Between Us. We're back and we're ready to rock and roll. Okay. Our first one, Monique. Your man. Mm -hmm. Did you know he was going to be the love of your life? I thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I think that if you you know, if you've got that feeling, I don't care if you've like with myself, it, he was the love of my life, but it took me 37 years to get married to him. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, there mm -hmm. was, you know, there were situations in between. But um, I think you know because it's like a comfortable shoe, if I can use that analogy. Mm -hmm. It's just a comfortable pair of slippers. And, and um, there's that connection. You don't, the communication is silence and you're still communicating. Right. Absolutely. And I think that means a lot. You found that out? Nope. <laughs> All right, Christine. Uh, you know, my husband. When my husband first met me, he believed that he he knew the minute he saw me, mm -hmm. I, I was the love of his really? life. He left. We were at an event. He left the event because he said, "Oh my God, what do I do?" But oh. he is my best friend. That is. So he cool. is. I just. I am. A, I'm a lucky girl. Yeah. How long have you been married? We have been married only four years, but we've been together fifteen. Wow, that's, yeah. that's wonderful. Very nice. That's my best yes. friend. I love hanging out with him, and you're right about the silence. Yes. Mm -hmm. I even put that in my wedding vows. Sometimes saying nothing at all is more than my heart could ever say. I completely agree. I think that I'm not married, so, you know, I'm I, not in the same situation, but I do know that having a best friend makes for the most intimate of relationships and someone you can talk to, or if you don't feel like talking, I'd like to just read the paper and sit next to someone absolutely we don't need to talk TV. i'm just happy as heck sitting there doing my thing and you know or working on one side of the house and he's on the other side of the house and it's just peaceful silence it's not work and i think that's what a lot of people misconstrue when you have to work at a relationship what are we doing today where are we going tomorrow where are we going to eat when when you have to plan 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 and have an, uh, an itinerary for a relationship you don't have a relationship I mean, it's you don't have because to you're not sure now about what's I going know on. What my problem is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. or an itinerary. <laughs> Throw it away. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm a planner though, so I have an itinerary no, for everything. I think I think it's great to have a plan. Like, hey, okay, don't forget Friday night, Saturday, uh, Sunday We're afternoon. We've got all, we've got all this going. Mm -hmm. But I mean, to to every day. Um, okay, if I see you tonight. What are we going to do? Well, if you're married, it's like, okay, tonight's Tuesday. What do you want to do or whatever? Go with the flow. Right. Spontaneity. Right. Spontaneity. So I love that when but somebody decides for me. Right. And I'm a pretty strong personality, but I'll tell you one thing I love. Somebody says, you know, I'm going to take you to dinner at Beepa's tonight. I'm like, 
Awesome. You yeah. bet. Yeah. Or I'm going to take Spontaneity. you voting. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> I'm going to okay. McDonald's, are you? Yeah. I'm, you know, I love McDonald's <laughs> for breakfast. Why not? Why not? Yeah. I go like for it. it. I like it when somebody says, I just got a couple of sandwiches. Let's go to the river. That's Perfect. exactly Perfect. Yes. A picnic on the <laughs> yes. river. You know, that sound of that river to me is more peaceful. When you get a few more years at my age, that sound of that river, <laughs> not good. Not a good sign. Because something else. Though, that's yeah. really yeah. nice. <laughs> I just, you know, just take me away. Me too. I don't care yes. where. I, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just mm -mm. Mm -mm. haven't you there, found that you some know? of the best times are spontaneous? Mm -hmm. yes. Monique, throw on a pair of jeans. We're going. Okay, where are oh, we yeah. going? Mm -hmm. Never mind. I'm going to mm -hmm. surprise you. And I've you. got an extra pair of whatever in my bag. I'm ready for whatever. There you go. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that's what's so much fun. You like to go sometimes. You like to go like with your girlfriend. You I go. Just, just go. Let's, oh. let's just go. I keep uh, a little suitcase in my car in the mm -hmm. back of my car because. You never know uh, when you get lucky. My girlfriend's no. She tells me, never know. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Baby no. suit and a toothbrush, no, right? You, know, <laughs> you always, well, what happens with me, because I have a big family, you never know what's going to happen to one of my grandkids or one of my kids. There you go. One of my friends. So I'm ready. I mean, one time this was so handy that uh, one of my friends got hurt terribly oh. bad and I had to drive all the way to Reno to the hospital wow. mm -hmm. uh, to see her so I'm so glad that I keep that extra clothes and in, in you know in my little suitcase That's smart that is good idea mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. always, good idea always ladies okay let's move on so mm -hmm. our next topic Fashion. is keeping up with modern times and the question is what does the modern look like to you hairdo clothing etc you were saying something about that the was it the, the, the exposed tummy or the ruching or whatever? You know, the ruching on the side of the clothing, which is just the gathering, you know, on your shirt or, or bodice, um, which gives a more form-fitting look across your torso, your stomach. I like it. Sometimes if I don't skinny. like something tight, you know. If you're skinny. Um, and so it's, it's definitely more <laughs> form fitting. And then the top of the blouse is going to be just, you know, a little looser. Um, I think it looks really good. I, I feel like, like I'm dressed up when I I like on. the ruching because it's really my skin. <laughs> it's all ripply. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just say, oh, yes, it's yeah, that's <laughs> color. Yeah, color. Oh, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's not ruching. Do you know what, Susie? I always believe that people should uh, dress appropriately. To your age. To your age, you absolutely. Know, because if you are wearing something that is like up to here and, you know, just down to here, it's like... Well, see, at my age, you don't do that. You know, you so just what am I supposed well, to dress I don't want like to shave though. past no, no, my no. knees. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you leave me alone. Good one. You're a lot younger than yes. us. I'm 43, you know. but I go, you know, is it... I have like three different types of clothes. I have you my work wear clothes. I'm old way. enough to be your mother. You know? I have so underwear older than you. <laughs> <laughs> at so at 43, do you find it difficult to find clothing? Because you're kind of caught in that. You're I remember totally at 43, I got do caught I in the spot. Do I shop in the junior section? I feel yeah. a little silly. No, go or, for it. Am I in the ladies section? But, you know, that's... I'm oh. sure anyways, so it's hard to find just the right thing. I think I that it, I think that you can wear what's fashionable but you have to massage it to fit your body, mm -hmm. okay? Um, yes. The short shorts is not getting it for me because I'm not no. shaving past my... <laughs> well, so I have a 30-year-old 30, 30 daughter who says no to those too, so oh, yeah. thank yeah. God. Yeah, <laughs> mine are in their mid to late 40s yeah, yeah, yeah. here. They're getting there. But for me, um, I'm, I say I'm old, I'm not dead, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm going to go with that. I mean, at 67, almost 67, I know how I'm supposed to dress. You and, always look fabulous. Yeah. You oh, do. Well, you have great but, taste. Yeah, really. But I, I, I'm casual. And I, love, I love your shoes, too. I am <laughs> casual. Oh, i got to show my shoes. <laughs> you got to show the shoes. <laughs> and that's what's in style <laughs> right so now. Cute. I love big, that. chunkier heels. Bright colors. And any, and any, beautiful. Bright colors. Anybody can wear these. I've had these things for years, and I hardly ever wear them mm -hmm. unless I wear something bright like that. But, you know, at my age, you got to put on bright colors to give you some... And the color in your cheeks. Even even the chunky <laughs> sandals now. I don't know if you can see my sandals. Yeah, right now those there. are adorable. But uh, they're you know kind of a nicer flip flop, if you will, and just a nice big wedge heel. I love them because they're so stable. You know, yes. It's not like walking in stilettos right. where you have to watch every step. I Christy, let shopping. me ask you a question. Yeah. Yes. When it comes to, and I'll ask you two ladies also. When it comes to fashion, hairdo. A lot of women have like more of an old, older fashion hairdo, their makeup is old fashioned. Do you think that that really makes a statement when you look at that person? Yeah. Or you figure, no, that's, they're comfortable with their, in their skin and let them be? You know, I just had this conversation with my mother-in-law the other day. Mm -hmm. And we both decided that, yeah, we should modernize our makeup. 
we should do something different with our hair. Yours um, is adorable. Yeah, you have a thank great Thank you. Cut. I have a great hairdresser. Thank you. But you just have to kind of keep watching what's out there and taking little pe pieces of it, I think. Well, I mean, next week you're not going to see me looking like Miley Cyrus, that's for sure. <laughs> but uh, oh, but come I, on. I, I have seen older women, uh, younger than myself, and they're doing a the little spiky and a mm -hmm. little bit. I, like I think it's cute. Yeah. Yeah. It depends mm -hmm. on the person. The, it, personality. Your personality. Yeah. yeah. It's everything, mm -hmm. you know. I can wear long hair. I can wear short hair. I can wear, See, I can't you know, no? anything the way I, I don't care. You and know, your hair's I, lovely. It just, thank you. Yeah. I just, you know, I just find a way to make it work. And if I feel like putting my hair down, honey, I put Let your hair down, down baby. We got, ooh, ooh, we got something else going there. Here we go again, Martha. <laughs> what oh about, what about, uh, Martha, you take it again? Because you do, you, you, all you ladies do your, your makeup very nicely. Do you think that sometimes the older you get, the rule of thumb is the lighter you go? You know, I'm not a huge makeup person. I, I mean, I oh, like it. Natural. Your skin is gorgeous. I don't gorgeous. just, I don't wear a lot of makeup. When you get older, you will. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, because you'll pale out like but that. But I also, well, yeah. you know, I'm not that matchy either. So, you know, my eyeshadow doesn't always match, you know, my lip color that matches my fingernails. That's a whole lot of fuss for me. Yeah. And I'd rather, you know, like a jean dress is good. Yeah. No, maybe no just eyeshadow at all. Barely because, any yeah. eyeliner. Yeah, just you know. yeah. light and easy. Well, you're lucky because you have natural, you have well, beautiful you're Dewey, yeah. Beautiful skin, and you're naturally pretty, so that mm, helps yeah. a lot. Talk to me in twenty something years when you catch up with me. <laughs> yeah, you'll have a drawer full of. Well, stuff. well yeah, I each morning it's a, it's a new she, adventure. You know, she's in front of the mirror for close to an hour in the morning, and I think, who has time for that? Honestly, yeah. she's yeah. a beautiful gal, and everything's to perfection. And I'm just I'm sitting in the car, driving, shifting, and putting on my mascara at the same time. There you no know, way. I'm a, I, don't Connie, tell life goes fast. Don't tell Officer Lowry. <laughs> yeah. get Officer you. Lowry get you. She only does it at stoplights. That's yeah. right. <laughs> only stoplights. Actually, mascara. Is I can only do the stuff like that. See, I used to wear my hair like Christie's. Mm -hmm. John likes my hair short. He says, you just don't look good with a lot because I have my hair so thick like mm -hmm. yours. Mm -hmm. And I, I just look better. The, the less I have, the better. And um, for me, me too, yeah. the less I have, the better. <laughs> <laughs> and I have, now, you you're, have you're a lot. You have striking. lovely thick hair. I have very thin hair. See, it doesn't look good. I even, see. Even. You always want what you don't have. Yeah. I would love thin hair because I have a ton of air. It, it dictates oh. the style because whatever's going to do in the morning is what I have to work with. So it does not always do the same thing. You can thing. wear your hair anyway. Like Martha. Martha's got her yeah. hair long now. She can wear And I thought I would never say, Martha, you look so good with short hair. Now see? And she and it's, she can pull this off. So yeah. it It's very beautiful. elegant. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank her her very look nice. is very yeah, elegant. It looks Thank good. You. It looks good on you. It takes up like a that. long time to get it this way. <laughs> 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 Ladies, we're going to pick it's, two it's new it's topics and take a short break and come right back. So Christy, uh, we so. got a free for all. Mm -hmm. and Are these the free for alls? And yeah. Mm -hmm. one. So let's see. Well, this this uh, topic's going to be about true friendship. Okay. Ooh. Martha. And number one. One. Again. Do you know a true and loyal friend when you first meet them, or does it take a lot of time for you to trust? Ah, good topic. Mm, like good. And, here's and the next. then our next topic no, will we be. Got, uh, we got a free, we got for, free for all. all. Oh, sorry. Okay, no, free, yeah. for all. Yeah. free for all. Yeah, free so, for all. So what we'll do is we're going to take a very, very short break, and we are going to come back, and these ladies are going to come up with a free for all, and we're going to discuss friendship. So stay with us. We'll be oh. right back. Just Between Us, a spontaneous, intuitive, live television show with topics that are intended to inspire, delight, educate, and encourage. And now back to Just Between Us. Back. Welcome back. And Monique, we're yes. going to start in and we're going to be talking about friendships. That's right, true friendship. Do you know a true and loyal friend when you first meet them or does it take a lot of time for you to trust? I think with women, we have this, this instinct and I think we know people but it takes a while still. sometimes it takes a you while but you know when you've got that know that person you have to know your gut feeling has to if right. you have a gut feeling you know you have to keep your eyes open and, and your ears open to well, hear you, what are they usually saying. gut feeling is yeah. gas yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm loving this now you tell me <laughs> anyway I think it, you know, you have to be very careful on trusting people. I'm, I'm one of those people that just don't trust too many people. 
you know, just... I'm guarded like you also. Yeah. See, I'm I not. Mean, that's one of my see, problems. And I find with your outgoing personality, I'm, I'm, that's interesting to me. Yeah. No, yeah. I... I I learn a lot in this little short life of mine. <laughs> well, it's, it's a true and loyal friend is much different than a really neat acquaintance or someone you go to lunch with once in a while. Yeah. The true and loyal friend to me is someone you've known for years. You can call them up and say, "Oh my gosh, I'm getting a divorce," or you can call them up and say, "But did you know my that? daughter's pregnant?" Did you know that when when you when you uh, at, which she's not Morgan's not. Right. But no, no, no. Please no. don't. <laughs> Just uh, any kind of major thing yeah. going on. But but did you know that person when you first met that person? There was a there was a bond there that you. you no, I'm talking about my girlfriend Stacy in Colorado, and I could tell after meeting her a few times that she was a true friend. There you go. She didn't talk badly about anyone. She was very open-minded, very heartfelt, and just a fun gal. And I thought, wow, she's great, you know. And then we've had yeah. years of friendship, and and you know, if something goes wrong or something goes right, she's the first gal I call. There you go. Mm -hmm. It's good to have a lot of different type of friends. I have um, longtime friends. My first friend. We started four years old together. Mm -hmm. Wow. And these group, wow. group of girls up until 10, we all met, and now we're wow. 60s. Oh. And we still that get together so every year, that and we talk really monthly. Yeah, that's See, cool. I think Lori that's and I, we, a little four-year-olds, we fell in love with each other. And yeah. we knew we would always be friends. Yeah. Wow. How exciting nice. to have yeah. somebody like that, you mm -hmm. know, that you've, you've, grown up, you've grown up with and you've had children and marriages and, mm -hmm. and you know, that's everything right. together. Well, and they know everything about you, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's why oh, you don't want to make any enemy. <laughs> and that you've lived in one place long enough to develop that long of a friendship. Yeah. You know, these days people move quite a bit, so. Yeah. Well, even one, one has moved a couple times, but mm -hmm. she's, you know, she's still, still in touch. One thing. Kansas City, she flies out every year. One How thing, cute. One fun? thing that I don't like about true friendships is when you give your secrets to somebody and then they use them against you. That's not really true friendship. Well, well you friendship. know, not not use them against you but with say, somebody else. But say them. But they tell you, you know, things about you that you've done before and you just feel like... It's wow, a betrayal. You know? Well, they're using yeah. you as a hostage. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I had one of my best friends who did that to me and I just felt... Yeah. Hurt. Like, hurt. Yeah. You know, because I gave you my information that I was hurting mm -hmm. and I wanted somebody to come for me. And then mm. you come back with this later and you throw it in my face don't that use I it did against something me. wrong. Right. You know, hello. That's why I don't trust <laughs> If I needed the reminder that I did something wrong, I can pretty much see it myself. I don't need my best buddy to tell well, me. Well, when you are hurting, that, that's wrong. Trust me, when you are hurting over something women having a, a problem with men, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, you just open up, right? you know, and you say everything to release that Everything pressure. that's on well, your mind. And you should be able to do, am but I right? You should keep it if, in the if vault. You're, if you're friends and if you're, you're close, you should be able to do that. Absolutely. I have never, never once said I have to watch what I'm saying in front of you. Never. Right. I mean, we're yeah. close enough. No, I'm, I'm the type of person that if you tell me something, it's like, Barry, six yeah, feet story. under. That's right. I have stuff no. that oh, yeah. I have stuff that was told to me, and the person is gone, and it would not harm anybody. Yeah. But I would never right. repeat it. Absolutely, no. I mean, I just, that's I just what it's all about. You know, Somebody that trusts you. Yeah. Absolutely, and whether they're on this earth or not, that is something that was a sta sacred bond between us, and I will I will never divulge. Uh, you know what what transacted no matter what it is I just mm -hmm. I just won't do that, and and I yeah. think that I think that's probably one of the the. The traits that you latch on to mm -hmm. when you know you've got somebody good in your life because you think, uh-huh, if I can share this and it stays with them, I know that that person will never betray me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's but, true. but then being betrayed, that's probably one of the worst feelings that anybody can can go through with a friend because how do you trust after that again? You don't. I, I don't really care. I, yeah, it's, it's so difficult, you know, to oh, say. Oh, I trust my friend. It oh, just, of course. You know, it's just that it was just between the two of us. Yes. You know, but, you know, we argue the case. And, sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. And then we forgive figure it out. So when do you, when do you know to end a friendship? I think, I think when, when it's consistent behavior and you see traits that you don't like, 
you or you outgrow. Or they're, they're not becoming of you either. They're not no. something you can share together and feel like you're benefiting each other when you say, "Wow, this is just not feeling good." Right. Why do I want to be in a place where there you know, it goes. I'm not spending that my gut time well? Feeling again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I you get that ash you don't all know, the time. But, you know, oh yes, mm -hmm. I can tell you. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Yeah. We're going to move on for our first hot, uh, uh, not hot topic, our first free for all. Yes. And we were going to discuss the the trial that is going to be ensuing and everything going on at the Fort Hood um, uh, with the uh, the doctor who was a who was a Muslim, mm -hmm. and he uh, uh, killed 19, I believe it was 19 <coughs> uh, service people and. Uh, from what I am gathering now, what I've heard is that these families that have been affected by this and these people that have been killed now, it's considered workplace violence. So therefore, they don't get their their benefits. Wow, which, I can't believe that. And this that. happened on an army base, is that correct? It, yes, it, it happened on an army base, and uh, he has has uh, since. But well, he said uh, Ali Bakhtar and went berserk and killed these people. Yeah. But he has he has since stated that. You know that he hates the United States. Um, he uh, he hates Americans. He hates our way of life, or whatever. Let alone he was pulling down salary and living in the United States sure. and killed 19 Americans and and uh, wounded others. Um, now he gets his due process right. and, 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 you know, goes through the court system and, and whatever. And I think that we need to understand that in the United States of America, we have a court system, whether you agree with verdicts or not, mm -hmm. this is our process. And until somebody comes along and changes it to a right to a, a fair and speedy trial and your due process of law, then I don't know what to tell you. You, you got to go somewhere where you do things different. Mm -hmm. But, um, I'm really upset about the fact that this man, with all of the rhetoric and everything that he did, I don't care about him anymore. I care about these victims and these dead people mm -hmm. and their families. Okay, and as you mentioned, even if you're on the front line or if you're in an office right. on, a, uh, on a base, you you're, military. you're military. You and your family should receive all benefits. Mm -hmm. Well, you're working. Definitely. You're working for the military. I wouldn't even call military a job. It's a life. It is yeah, a lifestyle. It yeah. It's not eight to five and you right. go home. They they pretty much own you. They can tell you to wear an orange it's vest a, when you ride your bike. Yeah. But they also need to then take care of every little thing you have. And it's the, a sacrifice that someone gives sacrifice. out of their life. And and men and women, and we're seeing more women going into the mm -hmm. military, and they're leaving their little ones behind, which oh. breaks my heart. Really <laughs> but, yes. but, but this but this happens, mm -hmm. and for me, these people, they're giving up so much. You know, it's not going to work. They don't get paid a whole lot. And coming home, and it, it, they don't get to come home. Right. And and I think that we need to put them a little step above, and give so them. Tell, tell me uh, if I understand correctly. The victims are not allowed to get any benefits because they were... It was a workplace violence situation. Because they didn't die in the line of duty out on a front, let's say, in a war. But their line of duty is everywhere, whether they're in an office or they're in a garage. But is that, but yeah. is that in, in somewhere in a paperwork that the conditions of the job, you know, maybe... I don't know. So we don't know that. No, no. So we're just, we can we're, speculate we're just, on that. We're just yeah. speculating and arguing mm -hmm. for, for uh, you know, uh, topic sake that obviously we don't know all the 100% I mean, facts. You know, the family deserves you know. to have yes, benefits. They the, the husband or whoever it is of the family has right. passed away, maybe left a wife and children. They do serve the benefits. It doesn't does it matter really how you die. They didn't take their own life. Yeah. It's that you were a part of the military. You're supposed to be taken care of by them. So the family's living on base. Dad is ambushed mm -hmm. on his job. Mm -hmm. And then what, do they kick her off base and say, good luck with your life? Uh, that I don't know. Yeah. Well, they, they really do Indeed. deserve the benefits. The family does deserve yeah. the benefits. Yes. Yeah. I mean, work, work pay, workplace violence is, is bad enough. But when it's done by someone else that is that is on the base and is a doctor in a trusting position in a trusting position mm -hmm. wow. and you trust this per I mean you're a decoy you're a sitting duck yes That's right. and I think that unfortunately that this is, is so scary I think this is not <laughs> going to be wow. uh, this is not going to be an isolated incident I would not be surprised if we don't see more of these uh, of these things I mean That's what do we do good. do we tell somebody because you are a, of a specific uh, race or religion that you cannot uh, you know be a part of the military or you can't 
teach or you can't do this and that. Your hands yeah. are tied. Oh, this right. is the land oh, of the free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have, we still have a long way to go in certain areas. And and, uh, no, and, and it's not just Muslim. I mean, that no, just happens oh, to be in the situation. He, just, but you know, remember the going postal thing years ago yeah. where a postman, you know, unloaded mm -hmm. a bunch of rounds right. on his coworkers. He wasn't Muslim. He no. just did it. No. And so. I don't even know if you can even say, it, we, we, we even want to use the word Muslim. Maybe he was just, he was a jihadist or whatever he wanted knows, to do yeah. that. Because I'm sure, um, I mean, I'm more than sure, there are um, l people that live in the United States that are Muslims that are, that are you know, peacekeeping. One thing that I noticed. Mm -hmm.